Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for our Bible study once again today. We thank you for the privilege of coming together to read, to learn, to study together. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you grant us the help of the Spirit of God to make us learn everything we ought to know for a successful, victorious Christian living in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, you open eyes of understanding that you will understand what you teach us from your word today in Jesus' name. And we pray that as we'll be presenting our petition to you at the end of this study, you'll grant us the faith to hold on to your promises and receive the answer from you in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight, once again, we have the privilege of coming to study the Word of God. Just a few weeks ago, we started studying the general epistle of James. We started from chapter 1, and we've already had the introductory study in verse 1, telling us of the James, the servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, writing to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, as he gave them greetings. Then we have already had the second study, telling the brethren, the children of God, who were scattered all about. In all the diverse trials and temptations and troubles they were going through, he wanted them to know the reason why they should count it all joy. And he gave them the reasons for that, that if God allowed anything in their lives, it was for a particular purpose. In verse 3, it tells us that knowing this, that the trial of your faith, or the trying of your faith, worketh patience. And then he counseled them by the Spirit of God, in verse 4, that they should allow patience or perseverance to have a perfect work. That they will be perfect, they will be entire, that means complete, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. The verses we're studying today, verses 5 to 8, have a close connection with those verses, that is, with verses 2, 3, and 4. Actually, it's talking about wisdom. Look at it, please, from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Here James introduces a subject that is very, very important for every human being and especially for every believer, every Christian. He wants us to understand that if we're going to emerge victorious with, uh, in all our temptations and persecutions, if we're going to be triumphant and we're going to have unswerving perseverance and remain with Christian virtues in all the troubles and trials we go through in life, there is one thing we cannot do without. There is one thing we need urgently and seriously, and that is wisdom. And this wisdom is not just speculation, and it is not intellectual knowledge. The wisdom is talking about is practical insight into the mind of God, into the purpose of God, practical insight into the things we ought to do to be able to go through all the situations in life. For you to understand what this kind of wisdom is, the Bible gives us the definition and the description of the wisdom. So you will understand the kind of wisdom we are talking about and what that wisdom will do in your life and in my life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 10, if the iron be blunt, and it do not wet the edge, there must be, then must he put to more strength. 
but wisdom is profitable to direct. The last part of that verse is what we need to look at. Wisdom is profitable to direct. That is in the issues of life, in your situations in life, it may be in the family, it may be in your place of work, it may be in the church, it may be in the responsibility the Lord has given you to do. You need direction to do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, and to have the right result. What do we need to be able to do that? It is wisdom. It is that wisdom that will find profitable in all the affairs of your life that will help you to direct those affairs according to the purpose and the mind of God. In Proverbs chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15, the first part of verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. Do you see here, it doesn't say the tongue of the wise possesses knowledge. It is one thing to possess knowledge. It is another thing to be able to take that knowledge, apply it in the right way, and use it in the right way to get the right result. And thank God the Lord himself has promised us this kind of wisdom. And that's the reason we're studying what we're studying today, that we can ask of that wisdom from God, because we have the promise of God to rely upon. In Luke chapter 21, verse 15, Luke 21, verse 15, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, that all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Here the promise of the Lord is that whatever the trial may be, whatever the trouble may be, and whatever situation you or I may find ourselves, that we can rely on the promise of the Lord. He'll give us understanding. He will give us wisdom that all the people that are persecuting us, all the people that may question us, wanting to get us into trouble, they will not be able to resist or gainsay the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding that the Lord will give us. Wisdom then, as we have seen from the word of God, is a knowledge given by God, helping us to take the right decisions and guiding us to actions that are pleasing to God in all things and in all situations. Naturally, as you look at your life, naturally as you look at the lives of others around you, you will know there is something we need and there is something we do lack, and that is divine wisdom. From the reading of scripture, and from experience as well, we are conscious of the bankruptcy of human wisdom, or human reasoning. That is to say, our own knowledge will fail us at times. And even the counsel and the wisdom of others will fail us at times. There are times that will, there will be people that will advise us, and they will be like the advisors that advise Job. And as Job looked at all their counseling and their comfort, he said, you are all miserable comforters. He was just saying one thing, I need knowledge and I need wisdom more than the one you are trying to give me. And sometimes we too will come to that situation that will say what I need now is the knowledge and the wisdom that only God can give. And thank God we have a generous God and a loving God who has promised that he will give us wisdom. And as, I, as we go through this today, I pray that that wisdom he will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's come back to James chapter 1 and in verse 5. And you will see what he's saying about wisdom. And you'll see the promise he has given us. If any of you lack wisdom, and we do lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men. Notice that, all men. And he's going to give liberally. He's not going to upbraid. He will not chastise. He will not scold. He will not rebuke. But it shall be given him. The promise is given to us already. But then we must pray. We must ask in faith. And God will give that wisdom freely and generously, without reservation, without disappointment. 
He is a willing father. We ought to be trusting children that will ask with unwavering faith. There are three points we are going to consider in our study today. Number one, wisdom from the father. Wisdom from the father. Number two, the way of faith. If we're going to get that wisdom from the Father, it requires faith. The way of faith. And then number three, wavering by the faithless. Wavering by the faithless. The passage itself talks about wavering. And it talks of the negative consequence of that negative attitude that if we waver, if we doubt while we ask, then we will not be able to receive. We're going to study that so we will see how to stop doubting, stop wavering, so that we can pray with assurance, trust, and confidence, and we'll receive from the Lord. Let's go back to number one, wisdom from the Father. As we look at that subtitle itself, it's going to tell you something because we're talking of a particular branch of speech or kind of wisdom. The one that is coming from the Father. That will tell you then there is another kind of wisdom. There is, for example, the wisdom of the world. There is also a wisdom, a kind of wisdom in quotes, coming from the devil. But of those two, we need to understand, the wisdom of the world will come to naught in the hour of need. That you can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, as well as chapter 3, verse 19 and tw verse 20. And then there is a kind of wisdom coming from Satan, which descended not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish, which can only bring confusion and condemnation and wrath and judgment. Human wisdom or earthly wisdom will not suffice. Because if human wisdom or earthly wisdom will suffice, it means that you can do without God. But there is no human being alive that can do without God. That's why human wisdom will come to a point when it will fail. Earthly wisdom will come to a time when it will fail. And it will fail in the most critical hour. Such critical periods arise for everyone in life when nothing except the wisdom from God, the wisdom that is, above, that is from above, will help and grant victory. Now, as we are talking about this wisdom from above, or wisdom from God, or wisdom from the Father, let us see that this kind of wisdom that you really need and that I need can only come from God. In Job chapter 28, Job chapter 28, here we have a series of questions and the answers are very obvious. It says in Job chapter 28 verse 12, but where shall wisdom be found? Wisdom of the right kind, wisdom to solve problems and wisdom to face all the circumstances and situations in life victoriously. Wisdom that will make us triumphant in all our testings and trials. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Man knoweth not the value thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. You will see here, as the question is being asked, where are we going to find this divine wisdom? It's not in the depths of the sea. It's not under the ground. And it is not here on earth. It's not in any place dwelling with man. Then in verse 20, whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? The man is still searching, and the man is still asking, I need this wisdom. Where can I find it? And then in verse 23, God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. You see, that's the reason we need to ask God. Because if we're really going to have it, we need to tell God, we need to ask God, you cannot find it in any other place, but God knoweth the place thereof, God knoweth the way thereof. And is the giver of this wisdom. We'll come back to James chapter 1 verse 17. 
James chapter 1 verse 17, wisdom is a good thing. Wisdom is a principal thing, as uh, the book of Proverbs tells us. It's an essential thing, indispensable in our lives. Where is it coming from? James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So you understand, as we're looking for this good thing, and we're asking for divine wisdom, there is just one place from where you can get it, and it is from the Lord himself. In uh, James chapter 3, verse 17. James 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. That verse tells us that this wisdom is from above. And it comes with some other uh, attributes and characteristics as well. Divine wisdom, that is, heavenly wisdom, comes from God. This particular kind of wisdom will enable us, number one, to understand the purposes of God in all our circumstances and trials. Many, many things happen that human beings are asking questions. And you find people in Bible days, some people, some things happen to them. And they said, Lord, why should this happen? They didn't have the human wisdom to unravel the things, the knots in their lives. And therefore they were asking for divine wisdom. Oh Lord, why? And there are times some things will happen in your life and you are wondering why. You want an answer to a question that bothers you. And to understand the purpose of God in permitting, allowing that thing, that circumstance in your life, you need wisdom. Number two, you need wisdom to, to perform the duty that God has placed squarely upon your shoulders. You know something that God does? God always gives you a shoulder, a kind of a, a kind of responsibility or duty that is greater than your strength, greater than your power. You say, why will God do that? Because he knows that if he gives you responsibility that you can do without more grace, without faith, and without more strength and power, that responsibility is nothing. He will give you responsibility that will need wisdom that will need his power, that will need his strength. And except you go back to him, you will not be able to perform that duty. And you will not be able to do the fullness, the complete will of God for your life. Number three, we need this wisdom so that we can learn some lessons which God intends to teach us through whatever we are passing through in life. You pass through some things in life and you are wondering, why is this so? That's a school. And the Lord is teaching a particular lesson. And he teaches you that lesson so you can use it next week or next month or next year in an important area of your life. And we need this wisdom to be able to learn the lessons that God is intending to teach us. It is a privilege to ask God for wisdom as Solomon did. And in facing the awesome challenges of life, you know that you lack the wisdom that you ought to have. But we can ask God for an abundant supply of wisdom which he himself has promised to give. You see in that uh, James chapter 1 verse 5. He tells us what we are to do concerning that wisdom that we need. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That's the thing that you are to do. And that's the thing that I am to do as well. We are to seek for that wisdom. And we are to ask for that wisdom from the Lord. In uh, Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Reading from verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver, and searcheth for her as for heat treasure. That is, you are looking for wisdom. And you are not just superficially looking for it. You are digging deep for it. You are seeking and searching so you can have it. 
you are asking the Lord, you are making your petition so you can have this wisdom. You are very serious about it, diligent about seeking and searching for this wisdom. You are seeking as silver is sought for. And then in verse 5, Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find knowledge, the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. You see that? The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom, practical wisdom, solid wisdom, a useful, profitable wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And so you see, we need to ask. It's only if we ask, we will be able to get. And uh, you remember uh, Solomon? Solomon was told by the Lord when he became a king that he should ask for this wisdom, that you have something. And he decided, he looked at all his soul empire, the kingdom, and he wondered, what do I need? What should I ask the Lord? We'll find it in Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. He said, Ask what I shall give thee. Here is uh, something that uh, we need to consider very well. Because we have the same promise as well. But you see, there are many people, if they add just uh, that kind of open check, ask whatever you want me to do for you, uh, wisdom may not be the principal thing they are going to ask for. And the faith may not be the principal thing they are going to ask for. They may be asking for one, two, three, four, five things, and those things may come alone without bringing other things. But you know, uh, Solomon was wise, because if you have wisdom, you can get almost every other thing that you want. And if you have faith in God, you can get almost every other thing that you need. Look at verse 10. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. He said, all I need, I need wisdom. And I need knowledge, because if I can have knowledge, and it can, if I can have wisdom, all the other things I'm sure will follow, that I may go out and come in before these people, for whom, who can judge this people that is so great. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, Neither yet as thou hast for long life, but as as wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings had have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the life. It pleased the Lord that Solomon asked for such a thing. And see, he answered his prayer. And as he answered his prayer, he said, I will give you. Now, did God actually give him? Oh yes, he gave him. We'll see the testimony of that in uh, 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. Here we find the way that the Lord answered. He answered him, and the evidence was there, and all the people could even testify that God gave that kind of wisdom unto him. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart. Even as the sand that is on the seashore in Bastati and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east uh, uh, country and all the wisdom of Egypt. And the Lord has given us the same promise today. He's telling us that if we ask, He will give us. And I'm sure you are going to ask tonight. And the Lord will give you the wisdom you need in Jesus' name. But let's see that there's a condition. If the Lord is going to give that wisdom unto any of us. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, the first part of verse 26. For God giveth to a man 
that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. You become, you know that uh, a child of God can come to ask God, the Father, anything. But if somebody is not a child of God, if he's evil, if he's sinful, if he has not repented, he has not given his life to the Lord, if he comes to ask, the Lord says, that's not the first thing. Confess your sin, forsake your sin, become a child of God, have the salvation of the Lord, and then the grace of God will come into your life, and it will make you good in the sight of the Lord. For God give it to a man that that is good in sight. If the grace of God enters into your life, that grace changes your life, transforms you, makes you to be able to call him Abba, Father. And then he accepts you in the beloved. For such a person, he will give you wisdom and knowledge and joy. But if we're going to have that knowledge and that joy and that wisdom and understanding to deal with all the problems of life the way it ought to be dealt with we need to have faith in god while we ask that's why we go to point number two the way of faith the way of faith we come to james chapter one and verse six james chapter one verse six but let him ask in faith nothing wavering let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Praying to God, asking from God is necessary if we are to receive wisdom. Indeed, in fact, if we're going to receive anything from the Lord. In the scriptures, the promise of divine help is always limited to those who ask. We must ask in prayer. And while we ask and we are praying, we must believe the Lord. In fact, we're told in James uh, chapter 4, look at it, James chapter 4, verse 2. Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Why? Because ye ask not. Look at the many blessings uh, you may be looking for, searching for in your life. And you have not God. Is it because God is not faithful? No, you know he's faithful. Is it because God is weak? No, you know he's powerful. Is it because the promises cannot be fulfilled today? You know the promises can be fulfilled today. You have not because you ask not. We cannot hope to receive heavenly wisdom to live a spiritual life, a victorious life, a triumphant life, if we do not ask from the Lord. No blessing is promised to the man who will not see God with all his heart. God knows our lack. Yes, he knows we need wisdom. He knows our need, yet he waits that we come before him and we ask him. And when we do ask, we ask in faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's not just praying. It's not just fasting. It's not just seeking and knocking. It's not just that we're saying, yes, I've been praying. Do you have faith in God? It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You seek him, and you seek him diligently. And if you are seeking him like that, and you are believing the Lord, there is no fear of failure. There is no fear of missing what the Lord has promised. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he has assured every one of us. In um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, Ask, and it shall be given you. If you ask tonight, it will be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. And then it says, if a knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And then it tells us, it gives us this assurance now, in verse 8, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Remember now, the particular thing we're looking for is wisdom. We need wisdom. And if we can get that wisdom, we can get almost every other thing. It says, everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And the Lord tells us even the precise time when we're supposed to believe, the precise time when we're supposed to claim that thing and accept that the Lord has done it and given it unto us, and then we'll be looking for the practical manifestation. He tells us in Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, all things... 
Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. While you are asking in prayer, you believe the Lord. While you are asking in prayer, you have the assurance that the Lord is going to do it. That's why James is saying, let him ask in faith. Nothing doubting, nothing wavering. Unbelief dishonors God, but faith honors him. If we would receive wisdom from above, we must ask in faith. That means we come to God with utmost confidence. We come to him with full assurance that our request will be granted. There will be no doubt in your heart and there will be no wavering at all. You are asking for that wisdom with no wavering of vacillation. It means that you come with total trust in him who is able to do all things and who is able to give you all things. And in fact, the Bible says he giveth liberally and upbraideth not. What's to be our attitude then? Our attitude is to come to him boldly because he is a faithful God. He has promised and he will not fail. I want you to notice uh, one little word in James chapter 1 verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. It's the word all. All. Which means you are included there. Don't think you are just a new convert. Don't think you are a weak believer. Don't think that you don't know how to pray. He giveth all. All men. How does he give to all men? Liberally. That means generously. That means abundantly. And in fact, it says, He upbraideth not. He will not upbraid you or chastise you or scold you or rebuke you and say, Why didn't you come from before now? Now that you have gone out and you have made a foolish step and you have failed, you, have, you are just coming out. He will not rebuke you because of that. Now that you are coming, it's what's important to him. He giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And then he tells us, it shall be given him. It will be given unto him. That's what all is very important. And I want you to look at another reference of scripture that still underlines, emphasizes that word all. To make sure that you are included in that word. Psalm 145. Psalm 145. In verse 9. 145. Verse 9. The Lord is good to all. You see that? The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. That means uh, there is no partiality with the Lord. If you come, he has promised that he is going to give you. That's the reason you ought to come to the Lord. Ask him for this wisdom without wavering, without doubting, and without thinking, will he give me or will he not give me? In Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and uh, 21. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. There are many people, when they come to the Lord and ask Him for wisdom, they will look at their past lives and they will say, every step I've ever taken in my life, it was a foolish step. I think, I guess, it's because I didn't go to school. I guess it's because when I went to school, I only managed to get through. I think it's because my academic uh, career is totally different from the scene, the profession I'm following now. And it appears that I've not been educated to live the life I need to live now. Forget all that. And do not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. He has told you to come and ask for wisdom. He will give it unto you. And then it says, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Oh, it's, you are giving glory to God because I found the solution to my problem. I've always been foolish, but now I'm going to become wise. I've always been taking the wrong step, but from now, I'm going to be taking the right step. I've always been uh, going through problems, and I would have failed before I remember the thing I should have done. But now I'm going to have the wisdom to use knowledge aright. And I can rejoice now because I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded, verse 21, that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. He will do it in Jesus name. In Hebrews chapter 10, 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You are coming to the Lord asking for wisdom. Draw near in full assurance of faith. Have been our hands sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That is the pure water of the word of God. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That's it again. Without wavering for he is faithful that promised he is faithful that promised in fact the scripture is so abundantly clear about that as you are coming to the lord to pray you come without wavering you come without doubting first timothy chapter 2 verse 8 first timothy chapter 2 verse 8 it tells us i will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands Without trust, without doubting. Without trust, because Jesus Christ himself has said, if you do not forgive the people that offended you, and you are still bitter, angry against them, how do you think the Lord is going to forgive you? Without trust, without bitterness, and of course, without doubting. So that you are asking the Lord with faith. That leads us now to number three. We come to James chapter 1. And we're looking at it from verses 7, 8, and 9. But let him ask in faith, nothing will bring. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For, for let not that man, that man that wavers, that man that is doubting, seeing that he shall receive any sin of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Here we are told what hinders prayer in general. And what hinders the reception or the possession of wisdom in particular when we pray. It's because we waver. It's because we are tossed as by the wave of the, of the sea. It is because we are double-minded. He that wavereth while is praying is faithless and unbelieving. It's like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed, as we have read in James chapter 1. He is a double-minded man. You know what that means? It's like he has two minds inside him. One mind tries to believe, and the other mind tries to disbelieve. There is a civil war going on within him. Trust on the one hand, distrust on the other hand, waging a continual battle against each other. It's like the wave of the sea. There is no stability at all. He comes to God with unsettled mind, unsettled conviction. He does not lay hold upon the promises of God firmly. At one moment, there is something like faith and confidence in God. But the very next moment, the mind is filled with uncertainty and doubt. One, at one moment, it appears that there is hope. That is saying, I'm going to the Lord, I'm going to pray, I'm going to receive. But on the other hand, there is fear of obtaining the favor which is desired uh, from the Lord. He keep the mind is restless, and because the mind is restless, the life is fruitless. You see, when we have double mind like that, it doesn't really please the Lord. But why should we be of double mind? Why should we doubt the Lord? He is the one that has invited us. Don't you know if you are born again, he invited you, come, and he will not reject you, you came. He didn't reject you. That should convince you that now that he's telling you to come and receive wisdom from him, if you will come, he will give you that wisdom. There is nothing that should make us doubt the Lord. He is a faithful God. We can stand on the promises of God. He will not fail. We will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. In Hosea chapter 10, Hosea chapter 10, verse 2, Their heart is divided, now shall they be found faulty. When the heart is divided, when we are not stable, 
when we are not leaning upon the Lord, trusting the Lord, having confidence in the Lord, we are found faulty in the sight of the Lord. It's like we are the people walking against ourselves, and what we ought to receive, we are not able to receive because of that unbelief. But tonight, that unbelief will flee away in Jesus' name. You see, when people have unbelief, there is something that they do, which is not right. Tried. They limit the Lord. And when they limit the Lord, they limit the flow of the blessings of the Lord into their lives. In Psalm 78, Psalm 78, we're reading about the children of Israel. They limited the Lord. Look at verse 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Look at your life, please, my brother, my sister. In which way are you limiting the Lord? In which way are you acting like the children of Israel? In the wilderness, he conquered the enemies for them. He performed so many miracles in Egypt. And then he brought them out with a mighty and a powerful hand. And then when they faced the Red Sea, you know, they began to cry. They forgot all the miracles he had done for them in the land of Egypt. They limited the Lord. But the Lord was still merciful on them. He opened up the Red Sea and they passed over. And they were rejoicing. But then the very next time, they were looking for water to drink. They began to murmur. They began to complain. Instead of going to the Lord, you see not the creator of the heavens and the earth, they limited the Lord again. But there was a Moses that will not limit the Lord. There was a Moses that could trust the Lord, a Moses that could pray. And he prayed, and the Lord gave them water to drink. And now, they were looking for food again. The one they had with them as they were coming from Egypt had finished. And then murmuring and complaining started again. Why didn't they learn to pray? But you see, that is like the history of many of us. The Lord blessed us before and did many wonderful things before. And when we come at a particular place, when we need something very important, instead of going to the Lord, then we murmur like them, which shows that we are limiting the Lord. I pray that that attitude of limiting the Lord will stop from in our lives from tonight in Jesus' name. You know, if you will not limit the Lord, He can do all things. And He will do all things in our lives in Jesus' name. Yea, they turned back and they tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the grace of God, inexhaustible grace of God. They limited the power of God, the irresistible power of God. They limited the provision of God, the inexhaustible provision of the Lord. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Look at verse 22 of that same Psalm 78. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in His salvation. They believed not the Lord. You know, when we are limiting the Lord in your place of work, you have some difficulties. And instead of going to the Lord for wisdom, Lord, how do I solve this problem? So that uh, I would, there will not be any negative effect of what uh, is happening. Instead of going to the Lord, we limit the Lord and we do not believe the Lord. Or it is in the family, maybe there is a particular trial. The in-laws are making trouble. Instead of going to the Lord, Lord, I need wisdom at this time so that I will not just say anything with my mouth so that the words I speak to my husband, to my wife or to the people around, it will be the right word to the right person at the right time that will solve the problem instead of having that wisdom uh, we, we do not even go to the Lord for the wisdom, then we say some things and then we break our home but it says they did not believe the Lord, they trusted not in his salvation, the salvation is mentioned in here, it's not just the salvation from sin is a salvation in all its ramifications. That means the deliverance of the Lord, the deliverance uh, that will give them all that they needed in their lives. Look at that same psalm in verse 42. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. All the testimonies they had had before, all the things they had known before, they forgot everything. You know, if you are going to develop your faith, you must be reminding yourself of the great things he has done for you before. And the great things he has done for other people in the church before. As you are reminding yourselves and reminding other people and talking about it, your faith will be growing. You will not be coming to the Lord with unsettled mind, unsettled 
conviction or with a double mind, wavering and doubting in your heart. But you see those who doubt, sometimes they even say it out, and the way they say it eventually makes them not to be able to enjoy the promise of the Lord and the provision of the Lord. In Second Kings, we see an example of this. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Whenever you see that uh, from the Old Testament or New Testament, buckle up and get ready to believe the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Whenever you hear that, you know you should be prepared that what is going to be said will go beyond the mind of men, will go beyond the ability and capacity of men. Because if it is the word of the Lord, he has the power to carry it out, and he can carry it out in your life. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Now this is not, this was not the word of Elisha or the word of a man. Yes, it's true. There had been a great famine. It is true. The economy was very bad. It is true that people were dying of hunger. But the Lord has now come to rescue the people. And he said, thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel and in the gate of Samaria. It will be so near and it will be at everybody's, it will be available for everyone. And then in verse 2, then a lot on whose hand the king gleaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? You see that? Limiting God. You see that? Can God do that? You see that even if the Lord were to open the windows of heaven, Elisha, what are you telling us? You mean that all this national problem, all this family problem, all this problem that has eaten up my life, you think it will go just between now and tomorrow? How can that be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, because God will do it. I said God will do it. Unfortunately for the man, but thou shalt not eat thereof. You will eat thereof. You will see the blessing of the Lord. You will be a partaker in Jesus' name. You see, it is some belief that makes some people not to be able to enter in. In Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. Here we are told so, we see that they were not able to enter in because of unbelief. Now you know that's talking primarily about the children of Israel. They were not able to enter into the promised land because of unbelief. But it goes beyond that. Many people are not able to enter into the victorious life because of unbelief. Many people are not able to enter in and have the wisdom of God for themselves because of unbelief. Many people are not able to enter in into the kingdom to have the abundance, abundant life provided by the Lord because of unbelief. That is why he's telling us to take it, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the Lord and then uh, going to some other sources to find help. But tonight, the Lord is giving us a great promise. And that promise is going to fulfill in our lives. And I want to show you now two scriptures before we close. I'll show you one in First Chronicles and the other in Second Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 11 and verse 12. Now my son, David was talking to Solomon. The Lord be with thee and prosper thou. And build the house of the Lord thy God. And he, as he has said of thee, only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding. Let's stop there. Only the Lord give you wisdom and understanding. His father prayed for him. David prayed for him. But the wisdom had not come. The understanding had not come. And then in, in Second Chronicles now, chapter 1, verse 7, the Lord wanted to know whether the prayer that his father David prayed for him, whether he wanted that thing really. Whether he believed in that thing really. Whether he appreciated that thing really. Whether he wanted that understanding and that wisdom. And therefore the Lord just said, when he appeared to him in verse 7, Second Chronicles chapter 1, Ask what I shall give thee. 
And it's the same thing the Lord is uh, asking you now. Of course, Jesus Christ is already praying for you, even now. And of course, we too, we are praying for you. But you will have to open your mouth and say, actually, I need the wisdom of God. Human wisdom, earthly wisdom, is not enough. I know that God will not fail. And I know He has promised the abundance of wisdom. And I'm going to ask Him myself. And therefore, in verse 10, Solomon himself now, beyond the prayer of his father, he said, Lord, give me now wisdom and knowledge. My father prayed for it. I've not got enough of it. My father expected you will give me this wisdom and this understanding that I will be able to lead the people aright. But I want to ask for it myself now. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and uh, come in before these people uh, for who can judge this people, thy people that is so great. Do you realize that you have a responsibility that you cannot carry out by yourself? That your knowledge is not enough? That your wisdom is not enough? That your ability is not enough? That your resources are not enough? That your education is not enough? Do you realize you need something extra from the Lord so that you'll be able to do what God wants you to do in life? That's why the Lord is asking you and is saying, don't you realize you lack wisdom? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men and he will give unto you, he will give to you liberally. He will not upbraid, he shall give unto you. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Will you ask the Lord tonight? And will the Lord give it unto you? We're going to become wiser. Wiser in all the activities of our lives. And we're going to be more productive in life. The things that were impossible before will become possible now because divine wisdom, heavenly wisdom is coming into our lives tonight. Let's rise up. We need wisdom. Let's ask the Lord. I need wisdom. You need wisdom. We need wisdom in our individual lives. We need wisdom in our family lives. We need wisdom in our places of work. We need wisdom in dealing with one another. We need wisdom in all the activities of life. We need wisdom to be successful in what the Lord has given us to do. Don't you know you need, you lack wisdom? Ask of God that give it to all men liberally. He will not scold you. He will not chastise you. He will not rebuke you. It shall be given unto you. Come and ask him in faith. 